Welcome to the Social Media Church Podcast. I'm Neil Smith, joined by special guest Stan Russell, a pastor stays. Stan, thanks for joining us. You bet. My pleasure, Nels. Well, before we get into pastor stays, Stan, can you give us a little bit of background about who you are and what you do and maybe even your history prior to starting pastor stays? Uh, yeah, I was a youth pastor for 10 years, a state youth director for the Assemblies of God, and I've been at this current setting as the lead pastor for 30 years. We just celebrated 30 years, so that was fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. And tell, tell, tell us about your church. It's Horizon Community Church in Tualatin, Oregon. We have a Hispanic uh, campus as well. We have a large Christian school, and um, it's just been a great work. Very missions-oriented, caring church. Just some wonderful people to hang with, man, and that's why I've stayed so long. I love it. I love it. And, and uh, well done. I've, I've got my, my 10-year badge in youth ministry as well, uh, and I've got nice. the scars on my on my left back shoulder to, to prove it. <laughs> scars but uh it it uh, yeah you can do anything in ministry 100 percent, 100 percent. uh it uh it is a rite of passage uh, yeah. for for many of us and uh, i was going to be a lifer and then i had kids and i was like i can't do kids and youth ministry and that was my exit uh from from youth ministry but stan i tell us about pastor states what what maybe let's start with what is pastor states to begin with pastor stays is a ministry that I co-founded with uh, one of my friends, Troy Jones, a great pastor in Renton, Washington, just outside of Seattle. And we noticed that during the pandemic, and really well before for us, that pastors, it's just one of the hardest jobs in the world. Uh, you're on call 24 hours, there's criticism, there's budget to be met. Uh, it's just difficult. There's building programs, there's growth to manage, even that can be stressful. And then you're you know, underpaid. And um, one of the things we noticed during the pandemic is that it got worse. It even got worse. And um, with with half the people leaving and funds going down, during the pandemic, 38% of ministers said they considered quitting. That was in the last year of the, of the pandemic. 50% of pastors said they'd leave the ministry if they had another way of making a living. So there was so much pressure, 1,700 we're leaving the ministry a month. Every month, 1,700 ministers. And and we care about pastors' kids, too. I am I was a PK. I am a PK. 33% of pastors say their adult children no longer are actively involved at church. Well, part of it is living in that glass house and all that pressure. With the additional pressure of the pandemic, we wanted to make a way to help pastors to navigate this. They couldn't go on vacation. They couldn't afford to get away. And uh, really it started with, I, I mean, I've been doing this well for 30 years. Ever since I've been here, I have friends. There, are, Most churches are smaller churches, so you don't have big incomes for pastors. And um, some of my friends, I remember one of my friends said, I haven't had a vacation in 10 years. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And, and um, I said, why? Well, I got to, you know, I full time, I, I'm a part-time pastor, part-time work. I can't leave. I need the income, uh, and it's low income at that. So with the pandemic, uh, one of the things that happened was Pastor Troy, my my partner in this, got COVID. He's a large church pastor. And when he did, he got fog brain. And um, for for a month to six weeks, he had real trouble. He couldn't do a sermon. He couldn't lead a meeting. And this dude is super bright and a super great leader. Oh. And during that time frame, he bought a house on the lake and he stayed there for a month. Church was gracious. They figured it out. And thank the Lord, he bounced right back in time. But staying there, he realized, I mean, this is a high revenue, high energy leader. He realized that he needed that break or he might not have made it. I mean, it was just so much pressure. Well, I've been helping pastors and he had as well for 20 or 30 years. If they needed a break, we just send them money and say, we, we can only use this for vacation. So I've just always had that burden to help them get away and do things, make memories with their kids that they couldn't do otherwise. But Troy and my friend and I, we talked and he said, man, people need help in this season. I said, yeah, they do. And he said, what if we took that lake house? This is the, this is how it started. Yeah. And we just offered it to people, uh, which we'll give it to them for free. 
And let's see if they'll schedule it. Maybe they can come in and get a break and get some relief in this season. Um, so um, we he offered his house and uh, kind of an Airbnb house. <clears throat> so he needed a little help. We helped with our with the church. A couple other people kicked in. You know, our church helped financially, so he didn't have to foot the whole bill because he. Uh, but but he sacrificed himself as well. And then he put it online, and in 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 a day. Uh, um, it was the whole calendar was filled up and I believe he offered three months and the whole thing filled up in 18 hours, something like that. And so uh, he got on the phone. He said, I can't believe this. <clears throat> he said, there, there's quite a need out there. It says way bigger than we know. And that, well, I said, I think then, you know, and, and, and um, I said, Troy, we need to think bigger. You need to think bigger. And this is a big thinker already. And, and he, I think he literally said, I don't want to think any bigger. You know, that was enough. Yeah. But he hung up. And right when he hung up after that phone call, the Lord just downloaded an idea in his mind of taking it to another, another level by doing an Airbnb Verbo types uh, website where pastors could go on and sign up be a part, all they have to do is pay a cleaning fee and a service fee, which ends up being about 20% of the normal cost. Yeah. And we, we do provide scholarships if people can't pay it and try to cover the whole thing as well with some generous donors that are helping us. Um, but but we just we just launched the website. Uh, you can go there at pastorstays.com. Uh, we have, I believe, 15 homes right now after the launch in the first week. We hope to have 50 yeah. by year end. We hope to have a thousand someday, but the thought is that pastors could get away, that they could rest, renew, that it would be something that they could afford, that those kids would have such a special memory and they would know that God and his church created it for them. They, they live in a glass house. They have all kinds of hard memories. What if we made some great memories for those PKs and just made memories that would never be forgotten? Um, but, but, you know, health, Healing hope. We just hope you could get away for a couple weeks, rest, renew, refresh, and then head back with a different attitude. So we just want to bless people to to be refreshed and know that God loves them. I, I love I love the vision so much. I, I love and I want to talk about even the platform and, and how it works and and how, how pastors can use it. Instead, I got I gotta tell you my my story and, and how I even found you. I'll, well, let me tell you first how I found you. I, I found you. I'm in an NFT, non fungible token uh, community called Tykes, and Tykes is all about real estate. And it's it's uh, you know, and we actually have you can use your Tykes to you like basically get Airbnbs, and uh, it's it's an interesting community. And part of the people in that community, and a lot of people in that community are Christians, and they told me about Pastor Stays, uh, and and I was like. I got to learn more about this. And, uh, and I, uh, I don't remember you know, if the website was up yet or, or how I found it, I maybe on Instagram and I, I know I reached out on Instagram, but it, um, it's a vision my wife has had for years. And in, in, in 2005, it was our one year anniversary. We were youth pastors. Um, and we were broke, <laughs> you know, we were a young married couple, no kids yet. Uh, but we wanted to go on an anniversary getaway. And so we went, we were in Houston, Texas, went to Galveston. One of our church members had a beach house in Galveston that they let us stay in. And uh, it was, you know, it, it was amazing to be able to get away and go to that beach house. That was a gift in and of itself. Uh, but beyond that, we were so broke that I remember we went to a seafood restaurant uh, for our one year anniversary dinner. We sat down at the table, what a real fancy or expensive place. Uh, but we looked at the menu and it was maybe twenty dollars a plate, and I don't know what I thought it was going to be. But I remember my wife looked at me and she said, "We can't afford this, can we?" And I said, "We can't." And we had to get up and walk out, wow. and she just tears, you know. Uh, and she still remembers that. Uh, That's why I don't want a a pastor and their wife to to not be able to not just have a place to go, but to be able to like really rest and have a good meal and read a good book, or read, you know, like. And, and really have a vacation and, and what can we do to prevent this from happening for others? Because that was so that honestly, that just was so like painful it, it, and it almost, I think realistically stand, I think it created a level of resentment towards the ministry. 
yeah, uh, ministry too. brought this into our life because we chose this life of poverty essentially is what it what it seemed like and and, and I think you know and nobody gets goes into ministry saying so go on vacations so they get rich but at the end of the day you need that rejuvenation you need uh, that refreshment and you need to be able to be refreshed where you're not like can I afford this meal you know uh, can I afford to sleep here tonight uh, and, and so when I saw pastor stays and I sent it directly to my wife uh, I, I I was just like Katie, this is your vision. And we've, we've looked and dreamed about having an Airbnb that we could make available, you know, in, in a process like this. And she's like, well, can we buy gift certificates to, for meals so that when people are pastor stays that we can oh. do that. Uh, so we, so I said, I want to just do it to you. I, we want to do everything we can do to serve pastor stays. And, and I feel like the first thing I could do is look, I got an audience. Let me tell my, tell people that, that are in this, whether they're pastors or whether they're somebody that maybe even could provide and support uh pastor stays your vision is so powerful and and, and i uh have personally experienced it and i also have so many friends that burn out in ministry that that need what you're offering uh so thank you for not just you know having a vision but acting on that vision and bringing it to a reality and obviously you're in the first steps of that uh but these are often the hardest steps and um to see where you are today already is is really phenomenal to me. So thank you for being obedient and faithful in that. So Stan, let's talk about practical though with it. What how how does let's talk about the pastor first. How does the pastor go about, you know, setting up and finding a place and and, and u- utilizing what is that experience like for the pastor? If you go to pastorstays.com, there'll yep. be a pastor sign up section. You just click on that button there. You go in and they'll just, they'll lead you step by step. One of the things we do to vet pastors is we want a picture of their license just to make sure that it's real. We want a website that we can find them on. And uh, I believe that's, that's, uh, that's it for, for vetting, but, but they sign up and then, you know, in just a short time, five minutes, you can be in there looking at homes and then you would. Uh, each of the each of the hosts we call them for the homes yeah. have dates that are available. Right now we have 102 that signed up in this first week that we went, that we wow. lost, and we have 16 homes. So it's exciting, but the thought is we need more homes, and we believe they're we believe they're coming. But you would search around in there, and you would click on dates that you would like to have. And some of these hosts, you know, they're Airbnbs that. Might have something in the winter and not the summer, but if you're a pastor, you don't care about that too much if you can get to the beach even, you know, Yep. because they're nice places. And, um, you know, you make a request and then that host will receive the request, request just like Airbnb or Verbo, and they will mm-hmm. speak back to you. Yes, you got the date. Sorry, that date's not available. If it's working right, the, you'll see the date that is available and you should be able to get it. Uh, but, you know, we're working out some kings we wanted to... Yep. We wanted to launch um, a little sooner, but you know, if you're going to do tech, you got to do it right. <laughs> yep. So we yes. we had to work really hard. We've got a great team and um, some volunteers, but high level people and good co- good companies that we're working with to get it done. And so that should be really easy. And and one yeah. thing I would like to say to pastors, I, I'd like to tell my story a little bit too because it, it's please it's please fulfillment of what could be instead of what was for you and your wife. Yeah. Um, so, so I was, we were in a building program here yeah. and, uh, you know, stats say that pastors will leave in a major building after a major building program within the next year, about 70% of them. The yeah. pressures were incredible. People want you to build, people don't want you to build, you know, you get criticism on every side. It's going up and it feels exciting. Then there's cost over on after cost over. And, and I was in a season where I just, uh, I might have even been depressed. I never took medication, but, uh, but, but months later, I, I went for a life checkup with a counselor and I took a test. You know, those things have 300 questions, but there's really only 10 questions in there that you're trying to figure out 10 categories. And the one that I was really, really in trouble with every time I came across it was, do you feel responsible? What do you mean? Do I feel responsible? I am responsible. That's the way I felt. You know, if anything goes wrong, I'm responsible. Well, that's almost like saying you're responsible if everything goes right. You know, yeah. 
Uh, but I just, I just wanted to bless the people, uh, probably had too much of a performance mentality, even for God, you know, young, trying to figure it out. Uh, it was exciting, but man, it was stressful. And, um, and I was in a season shortly after that was done where I wanted, I felt like quitting too. I just felt like I could go do something else and make a living. This would be yeah. my family and me. Yeah. And, and, but you're dealing with a call, you know, you have a call yeah. and uh, obviously I've been here 30 years. I stayed, but along the way in that season, when I was really in trouble emotionally, yeah. um, not spiritually, emotionally, it's not the same as spiritually. Like I'm talking to God, but I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed and, uh, you know, with the task at hand. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and maybe developing a little resentment too, you know, that can happen. Yeah. It's the temptation. So someone offered us a house in Hawaii. Now, Troy and I have been very blessed. We have had people give us homes over and over again because we're in churches that are a little larger. So we know the blessing of it. We can afford more than most people, but we're not getting rich. But we're not going to pay four or $500 a house per night. Yeah. We're not doing that. You know, we're not, we're going to, we're going to try to find something that's reasonable, but people have blessed us with really nice houses. But in this case, I'm just completely worn out. We go to Hawaii and we end up in a house that's brand new. It's a real estate developer who loves Jesus and said, go stay for a couple of weeks. Yeah. We walk in, the home's probably a $4 million home in Maui. We, we can't believe it. He's got two cars in the garage and says, use those. And they're just high level. Well, my kids are with me. And as I said, we're not high income people, you know, then and now. And, uh, um, we went in and there were just massive TVs in every room. This was years ago and beautiful rooms and a, a glass wall in the living room that opened up to the pool with a view of the ocean. Yeah. And after two hours, my son said to me, Dad, I feel like at any moment someone's going to walk up to us and say, I'm sorry, you're going to have to leave here. You're not supposed to be here. But we were so blessed. And here's what happened in these settings where we get blessed. We would be really thankful for the person who did it, that host. It was so kind. But they're believers. So ultimately, we would say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And in those times where I was taking those weeks, it's it seemed like God would, you know, I'd be worrying about my performance. And it felt like when we'd break away, God was saying, you know, I don't I don't really care about that. I care about you. Yeah. I care about you. And people gave us a time to just connect with God, connect with each other. And I remember uh, we went on an excursion to see dolphins and we didn't see them that day. And the guy told us, the guide, hey, if you drive out here tomorrow, they're usually here. If you drive out here tomorrow, you can swim right out here and 70 or 80 dolphins will swim in and come around you. You know, this is in the ocean. And we're yeah. like, really, he goes, be out here at 930 tomorrow and you'll have a good chance. So we left that excursion and said, let's try it. So we... Drove out there, it was a 30 minute drive, swam out there. We had our little girl, we put a life jacket on her, took her out there. And sure enough, at 9 30, we've got, you know, we're snorkeling. Here they come. I mean, 60 or 70 dolphins, and they start circling around us. And they had told us, they'll move close to you because they are intri as intrigued by you as you are by them. But don't reach out to them, don't try to touch them, they'll go away. Yeah. But if you just stay there, they'll come real close. So we're we're out there thinking this is unbelievable. We're in the wild, man, and and here we are in the ocean. And the kids are we're we're all pointing and saying, "Look at that one." There was one mama with a little dolphin. Yeah, I can't get in the screen. But a little bigger than that, you know, maybe yeah, maybe twenty four inches long. We're watching her and the baby especially. And then there was one moment where they they were coming down from low and they started doing this thing coming up. And I thought, oh my gosh, they're gonna jump. They're gonna jump, you know. So my son. Yeah. We got our goggles like this, and we watched that that the mama peeled off, but the baby dolphin went up, and we pulled our goggles off, and right in front of us, ten feet in front of us, like a ten eighty by this baby dolphin, and it hits the water, and, yeah. and we go, "Whoa, that's incredible!" And at that moment, I felt the Lord speak to me and say, "I did that for you. I did that for you," and it made me know that it's, that that He likes to bless me. That he wants to bless my family. He wants to bless you as a pastor. He wants to let you know that he loves you, not just that you are you need to perform or you need to do well. And the, the irony is ministry from that basis of relaxing in his love makes everything better.
And so I knew what that did for us and what that did for me. And Troy's hope, he knew what it did for him. Our hope was, Lord, help us to do this for other people, mainly those who can't afford it in any way. And that's most pastors. And we have talked about um, gift certificates for meals. And uh, I think you're confirming something that we need to make sure that they can do it all when they're there, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but we, we just, we want people to know they're loved and we want to create that opportunity for them. And, and we're hearing some good things. We're just out of the gate but we're hearing some wonderful stories about people being blessed. I love it. it and, and then, you know, uh, here thinking about the, uh, a, a pastor, what it's somebody who wants to bless pastors, maybe in the other side, that's maybe listening to this, that's not a pastor. Yeah. How, how can they be involved? How do they maybe get their home off the side? How do they, it, do you, are you taking donations? What, what is, what is that? Yeah, really, really the donation is them offering their home, you know, and they okay. they can go on the website as well. There's a pastor sign up button. There's a host sign up button. If you yeah. click that pastorstays.com, go to that host button and go in. They'll be step by step leading you through the process. There'll be an there'll be an email that you can get help from if you need someone. And we have some, we think they're going to be there immediately for you to help. Okay. And, and, um, if you've done Airbnb, it's all going to be easy. You know, you, you load your pictures. If you have some, ch- ch- I'm, I would have more trouble than you would have meals. But but if you know what you're doing, you can navigate it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, what we're finding is the second home people, like there are people who have their Airbnb, like yeah. that's a piece of cake for them, right? They do this. Yeah. Um, the second home people want to provide their vacation home that they're not even renting. Well, they need a little help to get a lockbox. They don't even have, there's, we want everybody who comes to pay a cleaning fee and we might scholarship yep. that cleaning fee, yep. but we don't want that host to have to, they're already donating the money that the time, you know, would come with the time that they give. We right. want them to get a cleaning fee. Someone has to come in and clean it. And uh, not, not all of us clean as well as we should. And, <laughs> and, uh, 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 and so, you know, just taking care of the host. We want to make sure they take care of that. And so, yeah, they can sign up. They'll get some help. If you're a, if you're a second home host, we will be patient and walk you through it and help you get there. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So, so I think practically that those two, you know, if you're, if you're a pastor, do this and, or if you have a home, uh, do this and maybe you're, maybe there's both a uh, situation in, in some scenarios. Um, it's, it's an incredible vision uh objective stan i'm curious on the technology side yeah. you know pastors generally struggle with technology uh and and inter- innovating around technology and, and what creating something like you're creating uh is is not simple uh technology um this isn't just like a run there's not like a here's how you create an airbnb on the internet uh you know software package what what have you learned uh from technology development that maybe even is transferable to ministries and pastors, you know, when it comes to technology development? Well, uh, full transparency here, Troy is that piece for us. So that'd be a great question okay. for him. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we, it's just harder than you would think, you know, we're working with a company that does these things. And then we're saying, we want this calendar to be interactive. Well, Yes. Uh, we need this to do that. So it's a constant feedback from people. Like we did a beta launch and we had a bunch of people telling us this doesn't work right. And the, you know, it was, it was, it was charging for eight days instead of seven for a week. There are all kinds of little quirks. So we, yeah. we worked through the beta for weeks and it took yes. well, probably months. It took longer than we thought stayed at it. And Troy, um, uh, we, we have another, another employee just part-time, Maybe he's a volunteer that that is a high tech oriented young man. And uh, matter of fact, the first time he was on the call with the uh, with the company, the tech company, they they made a request to say, if you don't mind uh, from now on, we'd like to deal with Brandon <laughs> because he's 20, <laughs> he's 29 yes. or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and he worked for Stripe. So he knew a lot of, um, you know, how to work things in that, in that tech industry. Yes. So it's really just working with that company back and forth, staying on it, uh, telling them what you wanted, trying to get it there, and then you got to pay for it. I mean, you yes. you can't create this yourself. So we we do need donors, and we have some churches. We have 
a number of a few churches that are on board at a high level right now to make this happen. Good. Our church is one of them. Troy's church is one of them because we Great. care about pastors and we're trying to create yes. that path. Uh, we have other churches that are thinking about making a, a pledge. We think it's a missionary pledge because we're taking yeah. care of God's servants. Yeah. And they're just making a small, some a larger pledge, but it's just to take care of that pastor. But tech is part of it. It's just a big piece. And if we don't nail the tech, then this won't work. So we, we just moved from the company we had, and they did a good job, but we're moving to one now that will service us well for $2,500 a month. And then there's and then there's additional pieces we have to add. Um, so we've got good people. We stay on it, and we pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, yeah. and, and um, that's probably going to be one of our biggest costs in the, you know, through the the life of pastor stays is making sure that tech is good. Because remember we, the vision is a hundred homes this year by the, you know, within 12 months and a thousand someday we want a thousand homes and 4,000 ministers. And I know that sounds crazy, but we, the beauty is we don't own any property. There's no property owned. There's just people allowing God's servants to come. And there's a scripture that says, when you bless the prophet, you get the prophet's reward. And we have these amazing hosts that love the ministry. And those, one of the things we're finding is what we what you felt is that God has given this burden to a lot of people. His servants are weary. You know, Elijah just lay down, get some rest. And he couldn't see anything straight. And uh and and the the, the scripture said the journey is too it's too much for you. But when he got rest, he was okay. When God's servant gets rest and and you know, they're with their family and they, they can suddenly hear from God a little better with all the busyness out, outside, you know, their their being. And it's it's been it's been great for me, great for others. But we're finding many people have this burden and these homeowners are just these hosts are just incredible with their hearts. Yeah. And Stan, I'm 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 believing that you're actually uh, your vision is too small uh, that that I think that it is. uh I, I think there's far more homes uh, that that should be and will be available, uh, and I think there's definitely far more pastors that need a uh, a vacation and stay uh, than than I think you know uh, you're dreaming for, and I think you're dreaming big, uh, but but I think that that's the need uh, that that you're meeting here is is massive, and uh, and, and I think yeah, I, I just I, I love it so much, and I think there's probably. Uh, I mean, I'm feeling there's there's one, but I'm feeling that, that it's not just one. That, that there's somebody listening to this that is like, man, this is what I need right now, um, and and it's going to meet their specific need immediately. Uh, but I but I'm I'm confident Pastor Stays is going to meet you know thousands of leaders' needs in in the coming days and coming years. Um, Stan, thank you for 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 yeah. doing this, and and I and knowing you know I think that uh, being involved in technology through the years. Uh, understanding and i think even part of my 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 advice to pastors often is stop stop investing so much in technology because it is more expensive than you think it's more it's harder than you think um but but i think in this case it, it's an essential you know to yeah. accomplishing it but it is like building a building uh but but these buildings technology buildings require more maintenance than your other buildings because right. it's changing all the time right. uh and so you built Stan, just even looking at the tech, you built a really good framework that's going to allow for scale of ministry impact here. That, that is really exciting and really needed. Um, and, and I'm going to be praying for provision as well. Uh, but, but I think even for these, these listeners, I think, uh, man, they, they often need a stay. It's not just the lead pastor. I think you and I know yeah. the youth pastor, it's that's the right. music pastor. It's the, online pastor it's the worship pastor. There, there are so many people right. in ministry in the trenches that that need uh that that stay and uh, need that rest uh, uh, they need that, that sabbath uh experience that, that that yeah i i can't i'm i can't wait to hear the stories that come out of pastor stays and yeah. the marriages that are impacted and uh the the children uh that, that are impacted and so it's 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 a beautiful vision and so, Stan, thank you for your for your faithfulness in uh, following this through. Anything else, Stan, that you'd want to share with our listeners? Yeah, before we wrap up this since you mentioned the youth pastors, associates, young guys, you, you, there there is no respecter of persons. 
you can get on and get any house right now and you can manage the tech better than those older guys. So get on there. You, you got low salaries. We want to take care of you and bless you. We had a young couple that was having a little bit of tension in their marriage. They revealed this after their stay and they got away for four days at a beautiful spot and came back feeling that everything was radically changed and, and better and so blessed. They connected in a beautiful way. And yes. I would say our vision is for more as we go forward. We're trying to nail this home thing first and get that space. Yeah. But we hope to provide counseling someday that's free. Mm-hmm. We hope to provide life coaching. And my heart is it's not around coaching for your church, but life coaching for you. The heart of this is not so much for the church and even blessing the church. The heart of this is for the pastor. How are you doing? How is life going for you? God loves you. We love you. And um, so we we hope we can do more as we go forward. And thank you. We've worked hard. We gotta we have to get it right so it's easy for people. Yes. And uh, yes. and and so far so good. But uh, lots more work to do. I will. Um, and I, so I just heard three action steps that I think if for those of you in ministry that you can take. I said it here. I, I thought of maybe as you were talking, Stan is. One is if, if you're a pastor, take a vacation. And if you've already taken a vacation, uh, you might want to take another one because I, I don't know. I, I don't know many pastors that don't need more time uh, away, and more uh, respite. The, the second thing I think you can do is, is think about how your church might be able to participate uh, with pastor stays out of your missions budget or if there's some other way that you can contribute to what's happening. Or maybe you even have somebody that's technical that might be able to help. With the technology, but but I think that how can your church be a part of building this infrastructure and, and helping uh, that that development? And then the third thing I would I would suggest is letting people in your church know you know who in your church has a vacation home, yeah, uh, and and let them know about pastor stays and how they might be able to make that available beyond just yourself because they've likely invited you That's to stay right. at their their vacation home, but but connect them uh, to uh, to stand to the team pastor stays. And so that they can share uh, that resource with other pastors uh, as well. And so I think those three steps are something that every church leader can do. But but I think don't don't think and one of the things, Stan, that I said that was that I regret so deeply early in ministry is I said uh, as a young leader, uh, I'll rest when I get to heaven. Uh, and yeah. that statement, uh, that statement almost got me to heaven sooner uh, yeah, than I should yeah. have been. That's what I was going to say. Uh, no. it's, it's, that's not in the Bible, <laughs> uh, to be yeah. clear. Um, and I think there's just a, there's some, there's a danger, I think in workaholism and ministry and, uh, it's not biblical, uh, and it's sinful, uh, to, to be honest. And so I, I, I just, I love this so much. So I just, I'll, I'll we'll wrap up that con- the conversation there. Um, and we'll have all the links in the series show notes on social media dot church. So you get links to pastor state's website and, and their social media and channels and, and all the things uh, you need to get. So social media dot church and then pastor If you want to go directly to uh, that website, we want to encourage you to do that. And thank you uh, everyone for listening. Uh, thanks for being a part of this community uh, and make sure to share this podcast with somebody who needs to hear it. As this is outside of our norm uh, with social media, but I think, you know what, we need a break sometimes of social yeah. media uh, so that we can, we can just be with God and with our family. Uh, so yeah this this is a good tangent healthy tangent for this podcast and i hope points you in the right direction uh, for you and your leadership moving forward thanks everyone for listening